It's almost an actual miracle. When you really think about the systems, the laws, the policies, all of the things that have been in place under the Indian Act, under the Canadian state for the last couple hundred years, we're still here. We are still here. And that, there is something to be said for that. It is actually a miracle that indigenous people were not just still here, but we are on the rise. And there are young people learning their language. There are young leaders like Kelsillam and others that are working to revive the language. Tonight's show, in what I would argue to be one of the whitest spaces in Vancouver, the Queen Elizabeth Theater. <laughs> what were you thinking? Yeah. Well, it's, it's by choice, man. We are in the whitest spaces. We know raising money for three indigenous youth projects. That's what we're doing. And they all center around land and language. And so the fact that we are not only still here, but the fact that we are focused and determined on revitalizing language, rebuilding community, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. And for me, this fight, this work that we're engaged in today is all about honoring those that worked so hard for us to be here. So many of our survivors that are here with us. So many of those that went through that hell so that we could have this opportunity here. That's what this fight is about. Our responsibility to each other. Our responsibility to those elders that are no longer with us in this physical walk. That's beautiful. And that for me is all of the hope that I need. I don't need anything else. I have everything I need to fight tomorrow, the next day, the next day. Because we made it. And the analogy or the metaphor that I use is that for 200 years, roughly, indigenous people have been burdened with this, this, this job of holding up this giant rock. And this giant rock is, is called colonialism. And for 200 years, indigenous people have been holding up this massive rock. And the project, the, the, the job was to push this, this rock up a mountain. And this whole fight over the last 200 years have been indigenous people moving this massive rock up a mountain. And over that 200 years, that rock occasionally falls back on us and it kills some of us. And over that 200 years, we've grown stronger. And there have been more and more indigenous people that have come to help push that rock up the mountain. And for 200 years, indigenous communities, mostly indigenous women, have been holding that rock up for the rest of us to be here. That rock has been held there. And we're slowly, slowly making our way up this mountain, holding the weight of colonialism. And now, by some miracle, by some way of miracle, we've managed to push this rock close to the top of the mountain. We are so close to pushing that rock over the edge, back down the other side, at which point in time we'll be able to relax. We'll be able to live. We'll be free. And that's the time that I think we're approaching now. We are calling Canadians, indigenous and non-indigenous people, to come and help us with the weight of that rock. To help us push that rock over the other side of that mountain so that Native people can have a rest. Because we are tired. Our elders are tired. Our youth are tired. We can see what's happening in our communities. The suicides and the things that our young people face. These are real consequences of the past 200 years. And so we're holding this rock up. And, you know, I'm... Of course, I don't really work out, but you know when you like lift lots of weights and your arms get kind of shaky and you're, you're, you feel weak? That's how we're feeling. We're feeling weak. And we're, we're holding this massive rock. And I believe it. We are so close to pushing that rock over to the other side where we don't have to hold up the weight of that rock anymore. We don't have to fight against that rock rolling back and killing us anymore. 
that we can free ourselves from this colonialism, but it's going to take a massive effort. And it's going to take more than a couple of Facebook posts, a few tweets here and there. It's going to take sitting with each other and having really difficult conversations sometimes. It's going to take Indigenous people loving each other again. It's going to take families coming together, mine included, to work with each other again, to talk, to love. It's going to take communities to heal amongst themselves. It's going to take all of us returning back to our set of original instructions, whatever those may be. And for us as Anishinaabe people, where I come from my ter territory, and I'll only speak for myself and our territory, we have a lot of work to do. We have a long way to go, but we're going there. We see the direction now. And we see the direction because it has been our elders that have shown us which way to go. Our elders have shown us which way to go. Now what we have to do is we have to get out of our way, out of the way, so that indigenous youth can lead us to that place. Because the youth have all the ideas we need. The youth know what's going on. And so I encourage us to think like that. I encourage us to come from a place of love. I encourage us to come from a place of, of hope. Not a passive hope. A very engaged and active hope. And to remember the three things that I mentioned in the start. Love, family, and land. Love, family, and land. Built with those three things. And let's see what happens. Because those three things were the things that were under attack. And those are the three things that I think are fundamental to rebuilding good, healthy communities. So we're going to break up. Not like break up, but we're going to break up into groups. Uh, how we'll do it is we'll take uh, two rows at a time. Okay? So we'll take the first two rows. You're going to move your chairs into a little circle here. We'll take the next two rows.